Hello, how's it going, guys? Uh, welcome to the very first episode of the Phil Show podcast. Uh, it is actually the, called the Phil Show, but it's a podcast. That's why Phil Show podcast. Uh, anyway, I'm your host, Philippe Eikemans. With me, I have a very special guest, Philippe Eikemans, myself, because it's my very first podcast. I'm not uh, in a position to have any guests whatsoever. Um, so it's just going to be me. And the two listeners that are listening to the this podcast, um, yeah, that's great. And um, it's just going to be me, you two people, you and me, hanging out as friends. Just going to talk about anything we like, what is interesting. Uh, you know, just have a opportunity to geek out, nerd out, just be friends, whatever you want to call it. Uh, let's not get too weird with it, you know, but, uh, yeah, that's actually, let's talk about the reason why I want to create this podcast. And that is because sometimes we just, I want to give myself an opportunity to talk about whatever I want. Uh, I'll talk about things that I think is interesting just to, uh, take a step back, relax. And, uh, that's like the experience of what I want to give my two listeners as well. Give an opportunity to, you know, to connect a little bit uh, with each other uh, as this channel grows, as this podcast grows and the list, the two listeners grow with me. Uh, we have an opportunity to, you know, to talk about whatever is interesting. And certainly in certain times, especially like past year has been a weird time. And so sometimes you just want to step back from it all. Uh, get to the water cooler and have a water cooler conversation, you know, or just a locker room talk. Sometimes you're just in a in an office job and you just want to get to the. You're, you're getting to talk with your colleague about Street Fighter or whatever it is, um, just to forget, you know, the office job that you're having or whatever you're doing in your life. And sometimes that's uh, important. So, um, yeah, it has been such a weird year to. Uh, to say the least, 2020. Uh, I guess no one has ever expected Mr. Corones to to be present here. Uh, neither did I. Uh, no one expected that. But we're just making the best as we uh, as we can, you know. Just trying to, you know, do our thing. And I mean, I, I've been socially isolating myself before. You know, it was cool. You know, I've been social isolating myself way before it was cool. You know, uh, those are the, you know, the perks of having a girlfriend. And when, whenever the relationship ends, you're just left with uh, social isolation. And uh, you're just thinking, you, you know, do I have to do all that work again, dude? No, I'm just going to stay, yeah, focus on my work and stuff like that. You know, so I've been social isolating for a very long time before the Mr. Corones showed up. But, um. Yeah, sometimes I look at certain videos and I see the 2019 date of the video and I, I think to myself, man, 2019, those are some good days, man. I remember it as if it was two years ago. Man, those were some good times. And uh, it's weird that like in such a fast time, things can change so much. Uh, in a way that you can be nostalgic about 2019, at least that that was my experience. You know, whenever I look at 2019, I think, "Wow, man! If only I could, if only I could travel back in time and be the smartest guy in the world." You know, that would be awesome. But uh, yeah, it is what it is, and uh, you know. I think we can crush 2021. I think people have uh, a lot of the same feelings about it. Uh, 2021 can be pretty cool if we just focus on ourselves, focus on go doing good, good for each other, doing good things. We can bring a lot of good. And uh, that's uh, that's an important focus to have. But in the meantime, we're, we, two listeners and me, are going to do this podcast and talk about some nonsense. And um, yeah, sometimes it's needed. Sometimes you gotta step away from it all. That's important. And uh, I'm just gonna grab my coffee right here. And uh, mm -mm -mm. oh yeah, 
Oh yeah. You know, coffee keeps me going and um, I love it so much. I don't know what it is. If, if there's one thing you should know about me, I love coffee. And, um, you know, I keep it simple. Um, I just drink water and coffee. If there's, uh, if I can choose, if I can have one thing to be addicted about, I'll just choose coffee. Uh, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't do smoking and coffee. I don't do donuts and coffee. You know, I just keep it simple. Water and coffee. Just, if I can choose my addiction, I just keep it at one thing, coffee. And um, I don't know what it is that makes coffee such such a great drink. But uh, I guess it's the caffeine, obviously. Uh, it is basically a drug. It's a stimulant that ignores the tired part of your brain. And that's why it made such, uh, such a wide population productive throughout the history. And um, yeah, that's why we do it still to this day. But... Um, yeah, I like to keep it simple. I'm not one of those guys that, yeah, I want milk and, and sugar or okay, I like a cappuccino. Do you have a cappuccino? You know, get the fuck out of here, dude. Just, you know, just keep it simple. You drink coffee or not? You don't drink coffee? Don't get the way with the cappuccino shit, right? You know, or even worse, the, the Starbucks people who go... Um, Pumpkin spice latte bullshit, whipped cream bullshit. You know, I'm not denying it's delicious. I mean, you can make fucking shit delicious with sugar. If you if you if you pour enough sugar on your fucking turd, you can make that delicious as well. You know, it's, it's not a uh, rocket science. But uh, you know, I just just give me the black. Uh, you know, when people ask me. What kind of coffee do you like? What what do you want? I just I just say, you know, I like my coffee like how I like my women, straight black. And that's it, man. Not going to make it harder. You know, I also don't buy any coffee for my uh, I don't buy any sugar for myself. So whenever friends come over and and they ask, uh, "Can I have some uh, sugar for my coffee?" I said, "Nope, I didn't buy anything. I don't buy sugar." So uh yeah, that's going to be their first time to deal with adversity. You know, some you're going to deal have to deal with it eventually. So I'm, I'm preparing them. I've been the father that I am. I'm preparing people to, uh, you know, make them... This is going to be their first day for them to learn how to drink their coffee without sugar. They're, they're getting rid of the side wheels, you know? It's their, it's their moment right now, you know? that's That's how I feel whenever... I don't have any sugar for their coffee when they come over. Um, it's time to get rid of the side wheels and start start wheeling, boy. So anyway, I'm I'm, I'm dragging this coffee topic way too long. Um, but there's so much to talk about with coffee, man, because it's such an interesting subject. I love it so much. I love coffee so much. I can't stop talking about it. Um, yeah, even though. Yeah, I like it. So, okay, here here's the deal. I you just have to learn to drink coffee as is because otherwise you don't you're not tasting the true taste of the coffee, the ingredient that you're drinking. Why subdue the taste of the thing that you're drinking if you could just drink something else, you know? If, if not to taste what it's meant to be, t you know what I'm saying, right? And uh, that's one thing that um, I have to deal with a little bit when I go to Brazil, because I have uh, family members in Brazil. I used to live there. And one of the cultural differences is, uh, I think it's a cultural thing, or maybe it's my family thing, but they drown their coffee in so much sugar. It's like in the same way, foods you know dr foods or whatever it's called what, what was it called dr foods the drink i don't fucking know bro anyway it's they drown their coffee in so much sugar you, you could almost see the the crystallized sugar inside that's how much and uh i believe the point is do not taste the bitterness but I guess for me, the whole thing is I want to taste the ingredients. 
you know, keep it simple, you know. Uh, but uh, whenever I'm there, they already make the coffee with the tons of sugar inside. And so I have to grudgingly drink it because I need it. But I have to drink it like, oh, I hate it so much, but I still need it. I need it, but I hate it so much. Oh, God damn. That's how I, whenever I have to drink coffee in Brazil. Yeah, because I'm so used to um, the bitterness, like the, the, the real taste of the coffee itself. And um, but that that doesn't mean that I can acknowledge that some places just you know the co you can taste the the garbage taste of the coffee you know because sometimes you know, I used to go to Starbucks um, whenever I went to uh, uh, airports and I just grabbed the Starbucks and you know Starbucks has um, it tastes like uh, liquid cow manure. And so purely concentrated cow manure into water. Uh, it tastes like garbage ass. And so I can acknowledge that. I have no problem with that. I'm just, I'm, I'm just drinking coffee for one purpose and one and a reason. I'm not, I'm not there to enjoy myself. I, I need to drink. I need the caffeine in my bloodstream to do its job. And that's it. That's it, bro. And um, I can, so I can acknowledge when, you know, Starbucks coffee tastes like horse shit, but, uh, and, uh, I, I'm not that kind of a hipster to go somewhere else because I just like to, you know, buy from established brands because I believe I'm there, I'm there for the brand. You know, if you have a successful brand and that's probably for a reason. And so I like to respect that I will buy from you because you're a successful brand. Yeah, that's the way I am because I like to, you know, pay my respects, just acknowledging you did a good job. I hate the cow manure tasting uh, c coffee, but I respect that you have established something great throughout history and it took a lot of time and you're now you're here. And uh, that's why I'm buying from you. Anyway, so there's, uh, yeah, that's one of those things like Brazil has that is different from where I'm well there's a lot of differences actually in uh, from Brazil and where I live I live now in the Netherlands 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 and so um there's a lot of difference differences especially in cultural things like especially with family things oh god there's a huge difference man holy shit okay so Here's the thing. Brazil never had to experience the historical poverty uh, that Netherlands had to experience. So they never had to have that living with 50, you know, living with 50 family members and <laughs> sharing one piece of potato with 50 family members and then going like, that's all we're going to eat for the next week. So be careful. Don't eat too much of that gram of potato. And, you know, industrial revolution and shit and poverty, and war. You know, we like in the Netherlands, they have their history of poverty. And so that that seeps into your culture and behavior. And that's why it's pretty normal here to be to be a cheapskate and um, really be careful with how much you use your peanut butter on your <laughs> your slice of bread, and um, and how much food you give to people coming over. You're really scared of people coming over because you might not have enough food for them, man. I mean, you might not want to give them food because you know there, there's a historical thing going on whereas brazil is more has a culture of abundance like sharing a lot of food with a lot of family members because there's a lot of food and a lot of things and that's for a reason there's also uh like when when your country is exotic there's like literally food growing everywhere like in every corner there's like everything growing food growing everywhere in your garden around the corner your your neighbors have trees grown with growing 
with food growing on them. There's uh, trees growing out of your ass with food. You know, there's everywhere, there's food. And so Brazil never had to experience that kind of poverty, I believe. Even though there is poverty in um, in a lot of areas in Brazil. But if there's there's no short of short shortage of food there, that's for sure. And um, and that's why whenever I'm in Brazil with my family, ha hanging out with my family, they're always sharing a lot of food and sharing, and that's what they do. And there's that's just a stark contrast with um, Brazil and the Netherlands. And it's all it's all cultural, really. And um, Whenever I'm there, uh, I eat as much as I can because that's the thing I do, you know, uh, until my stomach erupts almost. I look like I'm pregnant, like nine months pregnant with food. And then uh, the toilet explodes because I ate so much. And then uh, I lose weight whenever I live here again uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I re I used to remember like whenever going to a good friend of mine back in the days, uh, I, I remembered like going to my friend and then hearing from his mom. I mean, his mom is super sweet and he's such a good guy. I love him so much. But I used to remember like her mom saying, not too much butter. That's enough butter. And you can only have one slice of cheese on your, on your bread. Uh, only one slice. And I used to remember that like, only one slice is enough and not too much butter and i used to freeze to death at his place because the ac the heater was non-existent so i used to freeze to death almost every time i was i was at his place but uh, i guess i cannot fault people for doing that i mean when you have to pay your child's uh, university uh, the money for the university uh, I mean, I get it sometimes and you're a single mom and stuff like that. And uh, I get it. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do. And um, there's always a reason for that. I don't fault people for doing that. But I think it's funny, though. I think it's funny. You come there and you freeze to death and you can just feel the cheapskateness of uh, the, the person. But uh, I get it. I totally get it. So I have, I have my fair share still to this day that I sometimes don't eat. You know, uh, it's hard to admit sometimes, but I just, uh, not because I, I can't pay for it, just because I forget to eat sometimes. <laughs> but, um, and you know, fasting is, I like to fast sometimes. And so I'm preparing myself for when shit hits the fan. At least I'm prepared. I know how it feels, you know, that's it. <laughs> Whenever you fast and um, you're prepared for, um, you're prepared for stuff, you know. But there are so much differences um, between the Netherlands and Brazil. It, not just the food thing, man. It's in everything. Like, Brazil is so much more chaotic. Everyone does what does whatever the fuck they want. Uh, such a who, who gives a fuck mentality these people has. And they're like... So, and um, it's really contrasting to like how people behave in the Netherlands. Because I, I feel like here there's so much social conditioning. Like people don't like really go within the rules. They follow the rules. Like do what is supposed to be done. Just do what I'm supposed to do. Just act like I'm supposed to act. And don't do anything crazy. Like if I had to summarize the Netherlands in one sentence. Like there's one saying here. That is really like popular. Like really not popular. How would I say this? It's a really common saying that is like typical Dutch saying, and it goes something along the lines of, if I translate it, it goes like this. Um, act normal and you're acting crazy enough. And man, that summarizes like Netherlands as a whole, I believe. In like in everything, like in everything, like act normal and you're acting crazy enough. And I believe that it has some historical connotations as well. I just don't know. But uh, it has to be. It's, it's coming from somewhere, I believe. That's for sure. Let me drink my coffee again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So 
but that everything has its downsides and benefits that's for sure that everyone knows that so the benefits of having uh, social conditioning and no one acting outside the norm and just judging each other like heck, like crazy the benefits of that is that you have a country that is very structured very clean like the dirtiest cities are like heaven compare compared to some some places in brazil like clean structured the government does a lot to maintain you know the country while brazil has corrupted government you have uh, destroyed places places that are not well kept uh and and the corruption man jesus christ the corruption there so if you would ask me would you live there in brazil i would say hell no man i mean i love that country i love my family that lives there it's a beautiful country if you go uh on a holiday but i wouldn't live there man i love that country it's beautiful but it's a, at the same time it's a shithole but you know i like the structure here but there's a lot of things that i that I don't like here any, as well, but you know, it's, it's never going to be perfect. And that's something you have to accept. You have to accept things that you have, your situation that you're in and complaining doesn't resolve anything. It's just bringing you more into a negative state of mind and it's not going to do anything good for you. So I, I enjoy the things that I have here. I wouldn't want to live in Brazil uh infrastructure is kind of crazy uh like traffic rules what are those you know <laughs> uh traffic rules are just don't die and uh pay attention to so what other people are doing and uh if you expect that you can that someone's gonna stop like a car is gonna stop for you just because you're uh, crossing the road you're dead wrong, man. You're you're wrong. If you don't, it, you you know, Brazil is like one big Frogger game. If you're not fast enough, like crossing the street, yeah, no one's gonna stop you. You just have to be fast enough. Okay, uh, you have to calculate. Okay, he's uh, this this kind of meters away. He's uh, this far away. This car is this far away. He's going this fast. Uh, I have to go this fast, and then you have to make a calculation. <laughs> Uh, to cross the road, man. That's how it is. And um, here in the Netherlands, dude, um, what? Uh, how do you call this? Pedestrian, pedestrian privilege for days, man. Pedestrian privilege for days. You, uh, let me tell you one thing. If you're a pedestrian here in the Netherlands, you're the king, the king of the world nothing you are untouchable you're the king of the world man you can do whatever you want people are going to stop uh bicycle uh people on bicycles are going to stop cars are going to stop people other pedestrians are going to stop uh, there's so much like consideration for rules. Not, I mean, not always, of course, there are always exceptions to the rules, but I'm, I'm talking generally, general, generally speaking, you know, because we have laws and rules here that provide that, you know, as a pedestrian, you have um, priority, stuff like that. Brazil, dude, it's, it's like a death match over there. So those are the differences. I think it's interesting. I don't think I don't think one is either worse than the other. I just think it's funny and interesting to see the differences. Uh one funny thing I I also think about one funny thing more about uh Brazil is like they have order like they have text on the on their flag that says ordem e progresso that means order and progress and I, I just think like lately they're doing exactly the opposite of what is um what's on the flag maybe that's kind of unfair to say but um 
yeah if you especially if you follow the news and you're, you're into that kind of stuff political stuff then um, you probably would agree uh, i don't care as much i just my political knowledge is all intuitive because i don't give a shit let me just tell you that uh as as far as a uh, that's as far as my political topics are going to go in this podcast. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, man, it's amazing sometimes. What, what the differences in culture and countries, it's amazing. That's why I love, um, that's what I love about countries and cultures, that they can be so different and you can just experience a whole kind of different world. It's like whenever you play a video game and you can go, like, when you're playing Super Mario World and you're going to like different kind of levels that are like one time it's like a sand level, deserty level, one time you have a jungle level, uh, other times you have an ice level. You can experience all, all the kind of different level design elements from all these kind of levels. And that's the exact same way I feel about like uh, different cultures and different countries, and different people. I think that's amazing. I think we should keep that alive. And um, I mean, that there's no way to not keep that alive. I mean, people are always going to differentiate themselves in one way or, or, or another. And I think that's good. That's cool. And uh, yeah, but would I live there? Uh, no, uh, I just whenever you get used to a country, you just go with it. You know, you just go with it. You're not going to flip flop yo yo around because that's not going to do much i just think just go for one thing just specialize in that and just go for it uh, i just like it too much here uh just to say that and uh but sometimes that comes with um sometimes you're conflicted because you do you do have two separate parts of yourself because you you have family you have families in both countries you lived in both countries. You've been I've been raised in Brazil uh, for eight years. And then I moved to the Netherlands. And so you do feel sometimes if you if you have the same thing, like for for with different countries, like if you lived in two different countries and you have two different parents, uh, I mean, how would you say that multicultural parents, I believe? I don't know. Uh, you sometimes you just feel like you live in a twilight zone. You're never hundred percent at one side. You just you you always feel like you don't hundred percent belong somewhere. You're always like an, an outcast at some in some form or another. So there's a, a good stand-up comedian here in the Netherlands who's called um, Ronald Hudemont. And uh, he said some, he had like a bit which really resonated with me so much, uh, where he explained where, whenever he was, whenever he was in Italy with his family, their their um, their family would always say like, "Oh, you're just a you're just a Dutch guy, you're just a Dutch guy." And uh, whenever he would be in the Netherlands, uh, people would say, "What are you actually, Turk a Turkish guy, Turkish? What are, what are you?" And so I, I resonate, I resonate with that so much because I always felt like whenever I'm with my family, I, I don't speak the language well enough, uh, to really have that connection that because they, they have a way of speaking that I do not possess because I've lived in Netherlands. So I just know the basic, I can only communicate. I mean, not in the way they do, you know, I can speak Portuguese, but not in the way they do. Uh, I can I can speak f pretty fluent Portuguese, but there's there like nuance in the in the dialect and the way you're talking. You know, there are a lot of uh, differences. So whenever I'm there, I always feel like uh, how they feel about me is that I'm just more of a Dutch guy, more of a white guy, and more of a gringo. You know, they call it gringo, the foreigner. The whenever you're a foreigner there, you're called gringo. And that's how I feel there. I mean, I'm not used to the way of their ways. Very open, very touchy, very, you know, um, family oriented, very uh, body language oriented. Like, hey, you know, you know, the Italian thing, the 
raise their arms like, hey, Tony, how are you doing? There's a, there's a lot of that in Brazil as well, like um, very that really physical connection that you feel uh, with people. Even strangers around the street are greeting each other, you know. Hey, how are you doing, man? Hey, I love that. And you hear music everywhere. Whenever you walk through the street, there are music playing, uh, people greeting each other, being nice to each other. Uh, that's that's awesome, man. And um, where am I going with this? Actually, I, I just don't even know. But uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the things in Brazil that... Uh, it's so different there and uh, it's something that i'm not used to here in the netherlands to be honest uh, and so whenever i'm there oh yeah I, I remember where i'm going with this so whenever i'm there i just feel like a gringo because i have lived in the netherlands, netherlands for so long but whenever i'm here whenever I'm, I'm living here for a long time now and whenever i'm here i i just fail to connect also with Dutch people in a way they connect with each other because you know I've been raised from a young age very differently in a very different country and uh, and I think you're uh, as a young child you're pretty impressionable and that's where your a lot of your behavior is gonna form and uh, because I've been raised different in a different country with different cultures I feel like so I couldn't connect with Dutch people here as well because I have also the other part of me. And I also don't, even though I can speak fluently Dutch, there is, there is always a lot of nuanced things that instantly give me give away that I'm not a Dutch person. And so I'm always living in twilight zone, like not being able to connect in with, because you have like this split parts of you like split identities and i always feel more like dutch than brazilian but sometimes um yeah you just fail to connect because you're living in a twilight zone uh but i guess th it is what it is and um that's why i'm speaking english because that's a universal language man and you can um and even the even english i'm, I'm failing a lot of times but you know you have to do what you have to do and you have to ignore all these things if you have things in mind if you want to do things with your life you, you cannot limit yourself to excuses like that and um, you know things are going to make you different and that it's, is what it is and you just got to own it sometimes and even though those differences can make you feel insecure at times you just have to rem remember that uh, being different is okay and uh, own own that part of yourself and sometimes that's what that is what makes you diff uh, interesting sometimes as well it's only when you're too insecure about it that people are going to pick up and maybe that's um that, that has been part of the struggle when you're like split like when you have uh, been raised in multiple countries but uh, it's a learning process, man. It's a learning process. You gotta, you gotta do what it takes. Um, but I guess, uh, yeah, being an artist, I guess, is you don't have to deal with people much. You're just in your, you're creating worlds and you're like doing your own thing. So I mean, being social is important. Um, I guess around these times. It's going to be more common to not be, but I guess being social is important. But, you know, as an artist, that's not your, um, I don't, th I don't think that's your superpower. You know, your superpower is uh, creating worlds. And um, I know that since I, I was a child, I've been drawing and been uh, doing a lot of I've been drawing a lot and thinking about creating things, creating new animals, always looking at animals, insects, and drawing them, being inspired by them, looking at movies, playing games, and being inspired by them, and then drawing them. And uh, 
that's I've I've been an artist since age of seven, and um, I remember my dad uh, bringing me him to his office, showing me Photoshop for the first time, and uh, working on Photoshop, drawing some dinosaurs, pretty shitty looking ones, but uh, I was drawing them nonetheless. I was seven years old, okay, so that's why they were shitty. But the first time working with Photoshop, and that uh, I believe that was the catalyst for uh for me still working with photoshop and i think that was within me all all along and uh it's not my superpower to be a, an hr manager so i think so being social is an important skill but uh it doesn't have to be my so superpower I, that's one thing i realized and so creating worlds and thinking about ideas game ideas since the age of 12 i was thinking about like there were games that really inspired me to the point that i thought man i want to do this shit and i kept thinking of ideas card game ideas card games since the age of 12 has been my thing uh with a friend of mine i used to um create card games like paper card games they were terrible man holy shit they were terrible uh, the power creep in those card games were off the charts. I remember uh, creating uh, our own card games on paper and then a Pokemon card in between. So they still had that solid uh, feel. And then uh, we have these characters that have had like multiple multiple attacks. But there was... But there was always one attack that would be more powerful than the other. So you all you would always choose the most powerful attack. And there would be no incentive to use any other less powerful attack whatsoever. And so there is the worst game design you could possibly imagine. But I guess, you know, from uh, the age of 12, that's where you learn and you're going to make mistakes. And there, then there's the point where uh, one of us would create a stronger character that's like a little bit stronger than the normal characters that we would create. And uh, of course, because one person created a stronger character than... Uh, so I had to like create an even stronger character. And because I did that, he, my friend, then had to create an even more even more stronger character. And there, there the power creep began and one of the characters had like 13,000 damage attack or something absurd, incre incredibly stupid like that. But yeah, you know, that's the starting, that was the starting point for me of learning how to create car games. And I'm still, you know, I'm still passionate about games and I'm using my art skills and my interest in art to, um, as a catalyst, as a medium, you know, to bring my ideas and my passion and to create games and worlds and stuff like that. So I, I just know where my, where my, I just know where my interests are and what I think I'm good at. And that's what I'm going to focus on. Uh, I don't, I don't like to, I don't tend to focus on weaknesses. I don't think they're as, as productive as focusing on your strength and going like 100%. Because the same thing, because I view it as pretty much as poker. Life is kind of a, like a poker game. You could have dealt a bad hand, but, and think, God damn it, I have a bad hand. This hand is shitty. I wish I had a, double uh, ace and not a, a, a double a pair of two but you know sometimes the the game could change like the situation can change in in, uh, in and make your pair of two like the best uh, hand there is something like that I'm, obviously i don't know that much about poker to be talking with uh talking I don't know that much about poker to, uh, you know, in detail, because I don't know that much about it. But, you know, you know, you get the metaphor, you know, you know what I'm saying. 
sometimes you dealt a bad hand and sometimes the, the situation can flip around into your benefit. And then you could use that bad hand into your benefit. And that's what I think you should do uh, with anything in life. And um, as an artist, um, sometimes I feel like we as an artist can get to a point or an age or a point in our lives where we get a little bit jaded, you know, or you're not, you're an, you want to do something with art and you're um, doing a shitty job or you're doing an office job. And there could be at times that you're, you're getting, you're feeling a little bit jaded. And some of that creative flow, you're doing a job where like you have to be consistent, product, productive, you have to be productive consistently and uh, your productivity has to be like, you have to produce. That's what I'm trying to say. You have to be con constantly producing and sometimes that can drain a little bit of your creativity. And not everyone has the same experience, but I feel like a lot of artists do have that same experience. And uh, I feel like you have to, as an artist, you have to go back to your roots, what made you, you know, passionate and feel inspired to do things. And uh, a lot comes from that childlike curiosity and childlike inspiration that you got. Like when I remember like living in Brazil, I would look at insects and every rock that I could turn, I would find like, you, there's a possibility that you could find like a giant centipede the size of your arm, you know? And uh, watching Godzilla movies, I would, after watching a Godzilla movie, I would instantly like um, start drawing Godzilla again. And I think it's important to go back to that child like curiosity because as a child, you're pretty impressionable and you're learning so much. You you don't know everything yet. And so you're like a sponge. You're trying to learn as much as you can because everything is interesting. You don't know everything yet and you're trying to learn everything around you and trying to discover everything. And so I think whenever we get, we tap into that childlike curiosity again, that's when we can be at our best selves and be at our most creative because we're trying to explore and uh, learn. And uh, I think that can really help uh, with getting back to our create creative selves and our joyful selves sometimes because it is the, it is the stagnation that makes you jaded. It's when you stagnate and uh, feel that you're not going anywhere. And uh, going back to the childlike roots and just looking at your childlike self and just doing the same thing again uh, that made you like that made you like that. It's it's important. So uh, I don't know. I'm out of topics to be honest, and uh, I like to end with that. I think that's an end a good thing to end with. Um, so what did we learn from uh, from this? What's our takeaway with this podcast? Um, so we learned the uh, differences between Brazil and the Netherlands, you know, and uh, what, kind of, what I think about coffee, uh, artists, being an artist, drawing, and getting back to the childlike uh, curiosity and inspiration, getting back to that roots being your child self again. And um, so, yeah, I think that's it. That's the takeaway. It's not, it's, it's not much that we can um, learn from it, I guess, but you know, if you two people listening, enjoyed it, I want to thank you so much. You're the greatest two people uh, ever. Uh, thank you two people for listening to this podcast. I appreciate you a lot. And um, there, stay tuned for the for the next podcast and next videos. And um, right now, I'm just uh, practicing. Uh, the more I'll make, the, the of course, the more I'm gonna get better at it. That's the goal. And um, if you two uh, stay tuned, you can uh, see me. We can grow together, and you can see this podcast improve together. And uh, there's gonna be more to come. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for uh, listening. 
Uh, so I'll see you in the next one. See ya!